We'll rotate it till it drops. And there it goes. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Hey guys, <laughs> welcome to my silly aircraft build, Scrappy. We're building a crazy backcountry wild bush plane that looks like a trophy truck mixed with a cub. And if you stick around to the end of the video, Mark and I are gonna give away a free best tug. So if you need a best tug for your aircraft, we'll tell you how we're gonna give one away right away. And uh, also help get more people into general aviation. A lot of people wanted to see more stuff on solid work, simulator work, how I do stress analysis on the stuff before I build it. We're also gonna give away a bunch of grip lock ties. And if you're not sure what that is, it's another company we started, but it's rubber lining on a zip tie. I think Draco and my wife's cub got together and was made Scrappy. So basically Scrappy's gonna be a biplane, <laughs> trophy truck that flies, I don't know. I'm gonna dive into finishing up the welding of the landing gear. I'll get that off to heat treating. And while it's heat treating, I'm gonna cut out some pink foam from the hardware store with a water jet, turn it into a mini wing and stick it on this crazy aircraft build called Scrappy that's turning kind of more into a desert trophy truck with airplane wings. I'm really pumped about it. I hope you like it. I hope you follow along. Let's get back to work. Back to work and back to work. All right guys, so I get this question all the time and I try and type and get to messages. I can't get to them all. So for all of you who have asked and I didn't get to respond, what do I use for my software to draw the parts, design them, machine them, wings, gear, everything from Draco all the way now, turbulence before that. I've used the same thing all the way along. Um, I've used SolidWorks. I used it in Prodigy, my engineering firm that I sold a few years back. And I'm just rooted in it. That does everything I need it to do. And then also people have asked, how do I know how strong things will be? I use Simulia Works, <laughs> if I'm saying it right, to do all my stress analysis. So um, I hope I'm saying it right. I still get caught saying it wrong, but I believe it's- Simulia works. <laughs> Let's get back to work. Hi guys. All right, I'm gonna do something a little different today. Uh, I've been working on Scrappy, so as always, I'm a filthy mess. But uh, we're coming out of the shop. I put together a few clips for showing Simulia works, part of SolidWorks, a branch of SolidWorks, same guys. And I'm gonna show you some of the stress analysis we did on the gear we designed. And uh, I thought this is a cooler place to use better airplanes are doing touch and goes. <laughs> so uh, I put it up on the screen. I just thought it'd be easier if I could point and show you what's going on. Right now, I've got this back in SolidWorks. SolidWorks is, a, is the platform I used to draw. Simulia Works is where we put it to do the stress analysis. So here in SolidWorks, you can see, and I wanted to just kind of show a little bit of moving around. We drew the King shocks in, specifically how I had them custom built, made every single bracket. So every one of these parts you see on here is exactly what I used to cut and build the gear. What's really cool is in SolidWorks, I can take the tire I made and I can move it in and out of the screen to make it easier to look at things. I can change the size of the tire change where the load would actually be. So there's a point on here where I can pick where the pressure is, X, Y, Z axis, or a combination blend of them. And I can take the pressure and put it on that given point. But you can move between SolidWorks and Simulia Works. They work perfectly together. The Simulia Works is part of the stress analysis. Okay, right here, I'm pushing the pressures up to more than any uh, normal landing, this is a full-blown crash. And you can actually see, I can watch this bend, and even way at the back, I can actually see the bars articulate and twist into the frame. Let me see if I can get another view. See how that's starting to rotate up? And it shows you all the pressures as the movement happens. Okay, I just wanted to stop right here and show you just a straight-on profile. 
And then I'm gonna insert a clip and show you what the gear looked like and why I was able to save weight and add strength at the same time. And that's where this feature really comes to play. So the original design, and it worked great. This bar came up and was straight across the top and came back down right here. And it had a W web truss carried through it with the point pickup at this same location. And if you were to do a stress analysis and show that, it was absolutely more than enough strength. It was structurally perfect. Unfortunately, I'm not building a building, so if I can pull out some weight, I'm gonna do it. And that's where Simulator Works comes in. Because after doing an analysis, I was able to take out and just make this one giant triangle truss. So instead of just being a single truss, triangle, I changed it to two triangles and I laid the two triangles into each other so that it comes from the two sides of the gear attach points and they be inward to the two shock points and then they be back outward. So I basically built two triangle trusses, laid them down towards the shocks, tied them back and made a super truss. And I was able to do that with less weight, less material, less cutting, and I was able to hit the strength of a really overbuilt truss web. And there's no way I would have known that. I mean, you can, you get a good idea. I, I used to do a lot of desert racing and sand rails and trucks. And, and so I've built a lot of things <laughs> and I've broke a lot of things. And, and it's in the breaking of a lot of crazy suspension things. It's when you learn the most. And what's really cool is Back when I built a lot of that, none of this existed. So the only way I could do it was build some crazy rail, launch it 100 feet, come down out of the air 15 feet in the air and crash it into the sand. And, and when it broke, I knew where I needed to fix it. So this is so much better because I don't want to break the front of Scrappy. So this allowed me to save weight, redesign it, and come up with this new design. Now I've got this thing pegged where everything is deforming and you can see the color here. All of my main structure going back to the airframe is perfect. And this is simulating a full blown crash impact. And the only thing deforming is this little bar going back to the back. Now this deforming doesn't mean it stayed. It might just flex and go back. I'm, that, especially this light green, that would just show you it moving and coming back. So. Um, it's nothing I'm even worried about. It's mostly on the bottom one, which actually just has fabric on it. Anyway, I'm talking about a lot. I'm super excited that now I get to build things, engineer things, crash test things, like I did eight to 10 years ago, up until just a few years ago when I sold my engineering firm. I had to use crazy supercomputers to do this. And uh, before that, I didn't have a computer. I just had to build it, test it, pull it, break it. And now, then it was supercomputers that cost a fortune and a huge team to run it. And now it's a guy with Simulia Works. That's how I do it now on a regular computer. And uh, it changed the whole design. So basically, if I spent all the time showing you all the work I did in the middle of the night at 2 and 3 a.m., well, guess what? <laughs> I'd never get a plane built. <laughs> so I hope this shows enough you kind of get a, a, a tiny, tiny glimpse of what it takes to kind of put this together and then go build it. So uh, I hope you liked it. I'm gonna go back and build it. All right, guys, it's not done, but it's at least on. We're done for the night. I've still got to put in the truss beams that hold the shocks, which are actually at the location of a wing spar for the mini wings on the upper gear legs. And then you can see no cabane V, all the clearance. Oh my gosh, I'm so dang excited about this. Um, you can see where the airflow goes, how much room I got under the engine to help get the air out and out the back. Also the air will exit out the sides. The big cow flap area that's gonna be back in there that's also a flap. You can see when this cow flap opens when it goes down even further into a flap it traps the air that's under here and under here 
all get funneled together to create more lift. So a wing, a flap, and a wing all trapped together. I've always wanted to try it. We decided to do it scrappy. I hope it works. But so far, so good. I'm so pumped. It went together so perfect. Both sides were like a machine locked fit and I couldn't be happier. I didn't do any sanding or trimming. It literally just slid on, snapped, welded it. So I'm pumped. I'm gonna go get some rest. Tomorrow, we'll get back to work. Hey guys, okay, so it's the middle of the night. I just got back from working on Scrappy and I wanna show you something. I tried to open the garage door to get in and I couldn't. And the place is destroyed, and I couldn't be happier. Look at all this mess. And my son, my youngest son, Dex, bought these Wave Runner projects, and he's over here working on it. So let me show you what he's doing. All right, so I just deleted the oil pump, so now they're pre-mixed. Don't have to worry about that failing. I got the reed valves, just checking those out, making sure nothing's cracked. And the carburetors have been rebuilt, pop-off pressure is adjusted, and all recleaned with a triple outlet fuel pump put on. He just started this. So there's my youngest son, look what he's doing. So if you look in here, he's showing me why he's gonna rebuild the motor, because he pulled it apart to check, and he see this play right here. And he was checking with calipers what the distance should be inside each of these cylinders and how tight these two are compared to this one. So he's gonna rebuild it. So <laughs> that makes a father super, super happy <laughs> to see him, his youngest son buying wave runners, <laughs> working in the middle of the night so he can fix them up and sell them. So, <laughs> all right, good night. <laughs> We're gonna get back to work. There's a rusty piece of scrap metal for Scrappy that was off of Draco's axles. When I made Draco's axles, I had some little short pieces left, but now you can see it's not so old looking. <laughs> this is turning into the bracket. That's the last part of the landing gear assembly that holds the shock to the gear up to the aircraft. So this is gonna, all this weight this is already hollowed out. All this weight comes off and it'll be two tabs to the shock bolt. So thanks King for making great shocks. Appreciate you guys. This is to attach it. All right guys, so I'm getting ready to weld up my shock mount assembly. It's going on my upper A arms of Scrappy and I've got some cool parts here. So I got these aluminum bushings. They look very different than these bushing, see the hourglass shape. The purpose of that is, one, I want this bushing to weld. I'm gonna assemble and bolt this together, an entire assembly. And the bushing I'm using right now is 20 thousandths big. Oh, that is a nice snug fit. Bear with me. <laughs> Chris, this is where you skip ahead. <laughs> Wow, that's fit. Okay, got it together. So this goes like that. These parts machine go in like that. So that locks those two together. These bars that are really crazy machined go in like this and like this. And then those are pre-cut for the gear. So. A lot of crazy parts, but what I've done, little things make a big difference. If you pay attention to the thickness of powder coat, this part, let me try and hold this all at once. Probably won't be able to. There we go. <laughs> this part is longer than this part. This part is just to weld the assembly. This part I'll install when I do final assembly of the aircraft after I've painted the gear legs. And this is narrower by the thickness of paint. So this will slide right in and I'll be able to bolt it together and have the spacing perfect. I won't have to sand paint off to get it to go. So little things make a big difference, but I'm gonna bolt this up, alignment, 
align it, put it on the plane, and we'll have our double shock mount done. I'm super pumped. Let's get back to work. All right. All right, guys. We've got the A-arms tacked in place. So far, it's going really well. Here's my shock assembly to weld it together, ready to go. If I spin that, you can see how crazy these angles are. So this is all done on the computer, machine cut. And uh, that one's easy to tell which way it goes. This one, we'll rotate it till it drops. And there it goes. <laughs> uh, it doesn't always work out that perfect, but that's perfect. So I'm gonna weld this up. All I got left to do now is the truss web to get the strength. Otherwise, when the shock put pressure here, it'd fold this in half this way. So there's a truss web, two bars that go from here to this front knuckle aircraft, from here back down to here and here. So I've got a double web with diagonal to the front to lock in the shock. So, and then to cover all that up for the airflow, it's gonna have my wing on it, my flying wing gear leg. So we've got a lot more to do. Let's get back to welding. <laughs> All right, guys, so I'm getting near the end of finishing the gear. Pretty wild looking coping on this. This is the first of four of the main parts to go on, and that has to cope all the way up that edge. So I got this one here, here, here. I'm just going to tack them all on, and then we'll go through and burn them all out. So back to work. All right, guys, it's time to get dirty. I just dropped off all the landing gear parts, totally done. They're gonna get heat treated, then I'm gonna paint them. And while that's at the heat treat, I'm gonna do the little mini flying wing. So I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm gonna do a few things and I'll dive more into it later, but there's lots of things going on with my mini wings on my landing gear. A primary wing has dihedral. It's sloped slightly up and it gives the aircraft stability and makes it more stable. The flatter it is, the more neutral, the faster you can roll the plane. If you get anhedral, which is going the other way, which is what my landing gear is doing, it's a more unstable wing. There's a lot of aircraft out there you can find them on line. They've been building dihedral, anhedral, neutral for decades and I'm blending it. Now, there's some wings out there that have combination of dihedral and anhedral, uh, like a Corsair, it just goes down and back up. So I'll go into it later, and I'll also do, show some of the um, airflow analysis from Similia Works and, I can, and SolidWorks, and I can show the airflow over the gear. I'll talk more about how the lift um, will affect the aircraft, how much lift these little baby wings are gonna do. Um, and then how that lift works when the gear is in a flatter position versus the angle in flight, or if I were to maybe be able to lock it out anywhere I want it. So I'm gonna do some cool things with this gear. We'll dive more into it later, and I'll go into the math, let you know how much lift, how much effect dihedral and anhedral have when they're working with or against each other. I actually gonna get a little bit of benefit out of it, but I'll dive more into that later. Right now, I gotta cut up some foam, do a lot of sanding and start some mini wings. It's gonna be awesome. Can't wait to get them done and test fly it. But uh, let's get to work. We'll talk more later. This glue needs to be dry before you put it together. It just slides. And if you put it together, while it's still wet, it doesn't dry. So it's worth it. Spray it all, wait a couple minutes. I'll do both sides. Then we just slide them down the bars. We'll be done.
All right, guys. I don't know if I mentioned it, but if you, you see I got this sheet of um, particle board down. That is so that I have something to make sure that I didn't start gluing these on a little bit of an angle, because then when I wouldn't be able to put it on my pattern and cut it right. So I used plywood or a sheet of uh, four by eight particle board so that I could slide this up against the edge, have a hard line and a perfect 90 degree edge. And I just used that edge as I went down to chase this edge and continually make sure it stayed square. So that's it. <laughs> I almost dropped it. There's my profile, my wing. <laughs> we have a lot more work to do, but that is a dang good start. So I'm pumped. Let's get another one done. All right, here's the wing area for my upper A arms of Scrappy. Um, I've just finished sanding them and getting them ready. I was able to slide them together with my alignment bar and then work them together. So I've done both sides, chased the back edge. They're absolutely as good as I'm gonna get them. Now I'm gonna cut the angles in them. That's for the rake forward of the gear. Then I'll crack the edges, bevel it, put a router around the edge, um, fiberglass it, body work it, and then I'll have a mold that I can vacuum form the entire part, top and bottom. Then I'll split that and attach it to the gear leg. So this is done for now. <laughs> I'm super excited about it. it. It actually went really fast, like unbelievably well. I, I couldn't be happier. So. It doesn't always go that way. Today, so far, so good. I'll try not to trip and fall and land on it and have to start over, but let's put some fiberglass down. Back to work. All right, guys, so I've got this trimmed out. Made me a little nervous freehand in the saw cut, but I left enough to sand back and uh, didn't nick it anywhere. So that worked out good. I felt like I got a little bit lucky trying to stabilize that. But anyway, what I've got to do now, if you look at the way these are positioned, this is kind of the flying surfaces of the gear leg. This is where I would be sitting, the gear going out and forward. And as the gear travels, it goes from here to here and I can lock it in a position. So anyway, this is um, kind of the gear hanging position and the up position. The only thing I have left to do is out on this edge, as this gear pivots like this, because I made my tires fully articulating so that they always stay straight up and down and don't lean in and out. The tire at this point, as the gear travels down this way, would hit this edge. So I pre-drew it up in the computer and I made myself a little template. This hole will line up with that hole. And I lay this out right here on this edge, this cut line right here, you can see. And now I will cut from here around this arcing shape to another template I'm gonna put on the side that puts a line down here. And basically it just lops that angle off at 40 degrees, which is the max down deflection I get is roughly 40 degrees, not as far as a traditional cub 45, some as much as 50 and 55 where they're kind of sitting underneath the plane, mine are out. And uh, I'm gonna set this at exactly 40 degrees. So I don't know if that makes sense, but here's my angle chop it off, the tire can move as this goes up and down, never touch the flying surface. And this area won't be doing much other than putting cleaner air so uh, around the bars. This area in here is actually gonna create lift through this area and the same on the other side. So I'm gonna lay these out, cut that angle, sand it, route the edge, and these will be ready to lay up some carbon fiber on. So let's get to work.
All right, guys, Mark and I are here wanting to do something more for general aviation, get more pilots into aviation. We've done things in the past. We're gonna do something more. Mark's got an idea of what he can do to get your ideas to us so we can grow GA. We wanna give away a free tug for your ideas. So anything we can to help build general aviation helps all of us. So let's find ways we can grow GA for whatever the reason, because you're passionate, because it's your career, you wanna make sure it survives for your kids in the future. Your ideas, a hundred words or less to an email, and we will pick our favorite 10 and draw one out of the hat and give away a free Best Tugs Alpha. It's one of our most popular selling tugs, and you'll love it. And we can grow GA together. What's the, what's the email? Email freetug at besttugs.com, a hundred words or less of what we can do, and we'll work at it. Perfect. So they'll give away the free tug. You give us your ideas. We'll pick 10 favorite, put them in a hat, drag one out, then we want to work on that idea and give you a tug for sending it our way. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I forgot something. Uh, we're gonna give away a best tug. We're also gonna give away a bunch of grip lock ties. And if you're not sure what that is, it's another company we started, but it's rubber lining on a zip tie. So you don't cut your wires. It stays tight, it has a rubber isolator. So that's the plan. Okay guys, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I'm a lot further along than this video is bringing you up to speed on. I got to get some more video out. I'll give you a sneak peek right now of kind of what the wing is going to start to look like. Um, off of these pink foams I made behind me. And then I'm going to work really hard to try and catch up on a couple videos. Super excited to show you how everything's turning out and what we're, uh, where we're at today. But I'm weeks behind on videos. so. Project is going awesome. <laughs> I'm so pumped. And I can't wait to show everybody, get everybody caught up to where I am. So the next few days, we're gonna focus on videos, get you guys up to speed as quickly as we can. <laughs> Hopefully you have a new video coming real soon. Hope you come back, follow along, tell your friends to come see the silliness of the scrappy. I guess people are calling it the, the trophy truck with wings. I don't know, it's scrappy. Let's get back to work.